Well, praise God in heaven forevermore. Amen. Brother Jim, amen. amen. Brother Jim coming back at you again from Cornerstone Church. One more time for the glory of God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. We have been discussing the ministry of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. This will be part two. We didn't put it on the screen. Because those of you that follow us, you're going you to follow us. You're not following me. You're following the ministry of Jesus Christ. You say amen. Amen. But I'm excited about this subject. And I'm going to do like last week. Uh, I said the Lord would pull back on the rain some. He's still doing that. This is something, every message from God's important. Yeah. Every yeah. word of God is important amen. because he is the word. <laughs> amen. Yeah, amen. And his promises, uh, if, or yes and amen, but also to their commandments or not suggestions. So we don't take them lightly. Jesus said in John 8, 31, 32, as an example to those Jews that believed on him, uh, you know, if you continue in my word, notice there's a continuance there. It, and this is part of the ministry of Jesus Christ. Jesus taught more in his ministry uh, than anything else. In other words, uh, independent of all the different things he did, and we've got 35 some odd, basically there's 35 uh, recorded accounts of uh, whether it be miracles, although we're, we've been dealing with the subjects of demons and whether or not a believer, a born again person or not can be uh, possessed of the devil versus oppressed of the devil. Mm -hmm. And I said last week um, if you're born again filled with the Holy Spirit uh, that means you're not just born of the Spirit but you're filled with the Spirit uh, my answer to that would be as far as being fully, uh, uh, you know, possessed by a demon, no, because they can't. Uh, darkness and light cannot occupy the same place. But what we brought rise to that's a fact is that when a person gets born again, <clears throat> we spoke about the spirit and the soul, okay? And in John 3, and again, too, we don't have to put any of these up until I tell you, no scriptures until we get to the meat of the message and to my opening scripture. But um, it's important to have a review because some, some folks will be catching this for the first time. And uh, God bless you and hello to all of you in advance too that watch this worldwide, praise God. Uh, especially our brothers and sisters in Nepal, which Pastor Ronnie is just coming back now. And uh, he should be back here in a, a few days. He's been over there with Adam Cole for couple weeks. I was privileged to go there at the end of last year for about three weeks. And what a precious people they are, but on top of it, sound, uh, on top of it, they, uh, it was perfect. Um, <clears throat> they, a lot of them over there too, because they're hungry. Uh, we gained a lot of people, uh, subscribers over there, including their leadership, when me and Adam were there. And so I'm excited about that. And as I've stated before, about 60, 70% of our viewing audience is in Europe or Asia overseas anyway, which is an exciting thing because it's part of the Great Commission. And it's, this is what this is all about, is spreading the good news of the gospel throughout the entire world. Amen. With all that being said, I'm just saying that to the glory of God. Can you say amen? Amen. Praise God. Now back to center. We're talking about can a born-again, spirit-filled believer um, yes, sir, I hear this too. I, I would even go this far, the Lord had me back up to say this. And this is why getting not just born of the Spirit, but filled with the Spirit, because even Jesus did that in the River Jordan. Being baptized in the Spirit or in the Holy Spirit is critical for, and for many, many reasons. Yes. Amen. And yes. launch happened when they got filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Okay? And began and received their prayer language. But a person, let's say, that's just born again, and thank God for that, because without it, unless a man be born again, he can't enter into the kingdom of heaven, okay? Uh, but if a person is just born again and born of the Spirit, but not filled with the Spirit, because we're still dealing with a flesh or occupancy situation, mm -hmm. I do believe, too, that they're even more vulnerable. But I say that with Holy Ghost caution. Because there are many born-again, spirit-filled, yes, believers, because, again, this we crucify daily. daily. The flesh is, an, is the enmity toward God is your enemy. 
this is our temple. It's where the Spirit of God resides. But you will deal with it till the day you give it up. Yeah. And depart from it. And depart from the bodies to be absent with the Lord. Can you say amen? amen. amen. The Apostle Paul, as I said, wrote uh, 16 out of 27 of the epistles. He wrote over, over half of it. One, one epistle short of writing half of the entire New Testament. His own testimony in Romans chapter 7 was how he fought and had the battle with his flesh. He sought the Lord, I said, three times. At one time, this is when the Lord was teaching him about the authority of the believer. He said, no, I've given you the authority. You deal with him. My grace is sufficient. But you don't put up with him. But see, free will was involved, choices involved, and the power that was given to him was and is involved. Nothing has changed. Understand that. So there are many people, I've been one of them before, that allowed entry, whether it be through disobedience, whether it be through heartbreak, whether it be um, through a traumatic situation, um, sudden death on the part of family members. There's many things that can open the door if you're not careful. And notice I said it's a door. The devil has to have a door. That's access right. has to be denied or allowed. Yes. Amen. I said access has to be That's denied good. or allowed. Amen. One must understand this. I'm not talking about this for just something to talk about. I'm doing it so you can have victory. Yes. Amen. Jesus said this is the victory that overcomes the world, yes. even your faith. The whosoever is born of God overcomes the world because greater am I in you than he talking about the devil in or the evil in this world. So the greater one is in us, but we, we have a teaching on yielding as an example. One must learn how to yield to the Spirit of God, amen, and yield to the Holy Spirit, notice, the Holy Spirit, not an evil spirit, Yield to the Holy Spirit and the guidance and direction of him, which he's also referred to as a comforter. When Jesus went away, he said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will send the, I will pray the Father, and he will send you the comforter. And he said, and he will lead and guide you into all truth. Uh, yeah. All truth. Yeah. Amen. So <clears throat> he knew that this was a necessity in our lives. So we're discussing the ministry of Jesus and uh, we're doing that too, and we're fixing to jump into our foundational scripture. Uh, but I want to touch on this again, as I did last week. Um, the ministry of Jesus of Jesus was primarily okay. He started with what the twelve disciples, right? We didn't get all twelve at once, but they they came on board. All right, and he built the ministry, which is his ministry from there in them and in us. Yep. 2 yep. Corinthians 6.16 says, I will dwell in them and walk in them and be their God and they'll be my people. We are the church of God. Amen. The building is where we congregate, but we are the church of God. Yep. Understand that. He called this a temple, a vessel, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, so, <clears throat> and there's a lot more I can say about that, but it burned up too much time. But it's important to understand that the things that he did and taught, which were written for us, where the epistles are written to us, okay? The Old Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, was written for the believer. Amen. From Acts forward, the Word of God is written to the believer. There's difference if I write it, if a letter was written for me and I come and read it later and it's got the will there of something that was written beforehand. But it's another thing I'll have a letter written directly to me and handed to me with a marching order. Yeah. Do you understand that? And this is how the Bible is outlined, okay? So praise God. I'll pray and we'll get right into it. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you most of all once again for the privilege and opportunity to bring this word before your precious sheep, not only here but worldwide. Once again, less of me, more of you. In fact, not of me and all of you. Touch my heart. Speak through my mouth. Let me proclaim once again the oracles of God boldly. 
Let the word of God proceed out of my mouth in such a way that the incorruptible seed and the DNA of it, the spiritual DNA, if you will, of it will land on hearts of believers, not only here, but worldwide. It will take up root and residency on the inside of their inner man and manifest itself into a harvest of blessings that only your word can produce in this world and in a person who chooses to receive it, believe it, and act on it. In Jesus' name. If you agree with that, say amen. amen. Praise God. We can open to our foundation scripture in the book of Luke. Luke's gospel, the fourth chapter, and we'll open up what we did last week. Again, this will be part two. Those of you that are tuning in for the first time, I encourage you uh, to go back uh, and look at last week. So Spirit of God really moved, and uh, again, it has nothing to do with me. It will have nothing to do with me tonight. It will never have nothing to do with me. Uh, this is why I pray all of him, less of me, more of you, none of me, all of you. Yes, okay? Jesus. Yeah, Jesus said, apart from me, you can do that's nothing right. in buddy. Oh, yes, Amen. Right. <laughs> and I'm here to yeah. tell you, I, I learned early in the ministry that that is beyond, uh, beyond words. Yes. You can't do it without him, uh, and you don't want to. Okay? Uh, anything you manufacture in the flesh or birth in the flesh, you're about to be maintained in the flesh, mm. but when it comes from the Spirit of God, God can go and will go into a life and change everything, okay? Mm -hmm. This is the power of his word. He is, after all, the resurrection and the life. Amen. Amen. All right, Luke chapter 4, breaking in at verse. I'm going to go ahead, even though we have 18. I'm going to read 17, but it's okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to do this because I always like this. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. As a teacher, I like to, I like to emphasize that. And I know that the Spirit of God had this included in his word this way to show us something. Uh, it's interesting, you know, Jesus gets the book and he finds the place where it was written. He knew it was in Isaiah 61 in the verse, in the first verse. Of course, that was put in the proofs of the translators. But it's not like, guess who told Isaiah or gave Isaiah the prophecy? <laughs> he did. Amen? But now he's on the scene basically re-quoting what he told Isaiah. But he found the place where it was written. And as believers, that's what we need to do. This is why I don't make it up as I go along. I always back it up with the word of God. As I've said before, if it took the word to save us, it's going to take the word to keep us. And if you're going to also take and walk out a victorious life, you can't do it independent of the Word of God. That's right. You can't. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. You will ultimately fall and fail. Okay? He is the chief cornerstone. We're at cornerstone. The, the cornerstone is the most important part of the foundation that makes sure it's yeah. sure, laid proper, and watch. And you can build no greater building than that foundation is laid deep and that rock that it's built on is Jesus Christ. Praise God and Him crucified. All right. And there was delivered in the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Here we go. Verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me for a reason. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel or the good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. And I said last week too, the poor is not, although they're certainly included. Why would he preach? Uh, why would the anointing be upon him to preach the gospel to the poor? So they wouldn't have to be poor no more. Amen. But it's not just talking about poor people. It's talking about people that are spiritually bankrupt. They're poor spiritually as well. Amen. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Thank God. Yeah, thank to you. preach deliverance to the captives. Who do you think breaks people's heart? It's not God. It's the world and a fallen world with a real enemy. That's right. All right, and recovery of sight to the blind, yes. he's talking about not just people that are physically blind, but he's talking about people that are spiritually blind. He, he told the Sadducees and the Pharisees, he said, they have eyes to see, but they don't see, and they have ears to hear, but they don't hear. Or their hear, ears are dull of hearing, okay? Lest at any time I should open their eyes and they should see, and, all right? And understand, he said, and I've said before, understanding regulates receiving of spiritual things. And, uh, and bottom line, see what I'm saying and hear what I'm saying. You follow me? Amen. The eyes of their understanding being enlightened. Okay. So to preach deliverance to the captives, think of that. 
recovery of sight to the blind and set at liberty them that are bruised. And this, of course, has to do with iniquity, but we've got other teachings on that. So if you go back and do our broadcast, go, go look at the teachings on iniquity. One of the most important <laughs> topics in the entire Bible, the mystery of iniquity. It's incredibly important. Even tied to this, it's extremely important to understand the difference between iniquity and sin. That iniquity is the propensity for sin. It is what causes a person to sin. You follow me? Uh, Lucifer, who became Satan as an example, was perfect in all his ways. And who created him? God did. In all his ways till iniquity was found in him. Iniquity was the thing that caused him to rebel against God, to be lifted up in pride, to want to be like the Most High God, and uh, it caused him to rebel. And when he acted on that, then sin is called transgression. Now it's outward or manifest, meaning you acted on that iniquity. You've acted on that iniquity. I'm just following the Holy Ghost. Is that okay? Because yeah. see, also too, iniquities are passed on. They come through bloodlines. The bloodline follows the Father anyway. That's why Jesus came sinless by way of the Father and seated himself in the, into the Virgin Mary, okay? <clears throat> and her being a virgin had nothing to do with the purity part of it or anything. But obviously he's going to do it through a clean vessel, through a, a virgin vessel. The key is the bloodline. He had what I call type G blood. He had never sinned before. You follow me? So we needed a substitutionary sacrifice that could take away the sins of the world that was sinless. Everyone from the garden forward after the fall that had a belly button was shaping an iniquity and in sin to their mother conceive them. That's why they had to have a Savior, ultimately. We all do. Yes. We cannot save ourselves. That's right. Again, I'm going to follow the Holy Ghost. He lets me off of it. Iniquity... Uh, like I said, it can be pa it's passed on or picked up. It can be passed on or picked up. You say, well, what do you mean picked up? Iniquity is something that <clears throat> is lies under the surface, if you will. It is the causative thing in a, a, a propensity within a person that causes them to transgress or violate the, the laws of God and basically sin. That's why he was wounded for their transgressions, yes sir. I was bruised for their iniquities. Notice he was wounded for transgressions which is outward or manifest. Transgression is sin. But I was bruised for their iniquity which implies an internal condition. Jesus came sinless, type G blood. He was burnt into the earth and there was no iniquity in him. You follow me? But though he was the son of man and was raised and grew up to be 30 years old and really launched his ministry, amen, even Jesus had to deal with the flesh. Yeah. Thus, what was the whole mountain of temptation thing about, like I said? You follow me? That's right. The word of God says that he was tempted and tested in all points as we are, yeah. yet without succumbing to it. Amen. He let me say it that way. Yet without sinning. Amen? Amen. Alright. Now he'll let me move on. Alright. 19 to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down. The eyes of all that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. Why did he say that? The prophecy that was given by Isaiah is now being fulfilled in your hearing. Yeah. Here I am. I'm on the scene. That which he talked about back there is now right here in front of you. And of course, they all got mad. <laughs> Amen. Religious spirits. Amen. Glory to God. Yeah. Now, last week, what we did, and we're not going to go as far with it this week, but I'm going to touch on it, and then we're going we're gonna to hit some scriptures. Amen. Yes. Last week, I pointed out from the book of Mark that in the beginning of Jesus' ministry, though I said there's 35 roughly recorded 
uh, miracles and not, not just miracles but things that Jesus did within his ministry but the first thing he did, because we always think, well, the first, because it was, the first miracle was turning the water into wine at the wedding uh, feast of Canaan. Yeah. We're not on the subject of miracles. Mm -hmm. I have them here. We will talk about them as we move through this more of the ministry of Jesus. Amen? And, and, and let me say this when I say we'll talk about them, because right, right now we're talking about dealing with demons. Amen? This was something he did right out of the gate. We see it right away in the first chapter. You don't even get hardly into the first chapter of the book of Mark. It's in also other, uh, uh, other books too. And then as I closed last week, I showed at the end of the book. So you can say the opening he dealt with them. Then we go to Mark 16. We'll look at it later, 15 through 20. And we see there that when he was, was ready for his ascension, he told them to go forward and do the same thing because they had been endowed with power on how they had been given the authority. They observed. They saw how he did it. You go now do it. Amen. And then it said the Lord worked with them or with his word, confirming his word with signs following. Amen. Amen. So this is what this is all about. You don't have to let the devil kick you around. Right. But if you let him, he will. If you let him, he will. For the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, fleshy, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Strongholds have to do with demonic activity. Born again or not, you can have a stronghold in your life. You can have a propensity via iniquity, but a propensity, let's just stick with that word. A strong appetite is what that word means. An inclination, a strong appetite toward a particular sin or sins. You may be like me. I have no propensity for smoking cigarettes. I never did. I like to try to play big when I was a kid one time, smoking it. Ooh, I just hated it. I never had an issue with it. My dad used to even talk about that too. He said, because my father was a smoker. But he said, you know what? None of my kids smoke. And none of us did. My other three sisters didn't smoke either. You could put me in a room. You could put me at, at, in the Marlboro factory. And I, you could lock me up there. And they, I'd sleep me there for 30 days. And I guarantee you, I can do it. That boxes all around me. Mm -hmm. And I never be tempted one time to open up one of them boxes and try one. I have no propensity for it. There's no iniquity in my life. That's not, that is not in my life. But don't put me in the Budweiser plant. I'm saying this preacher be honest with you. Some of them won't. See, I have to know my boundaries. Because Jimmy liked to drink. Pastor was with me one time at lunch, one of our many lunches. He goes, it must be an acquired taste. I said, no, you don't get it, Pastor, because Pastor was never a drinker, right? I said, no. I said, I asked him. I ain't got to break it down for him. I said, it's how it makes you feel. You do it for effect. It's a drug like anything else. And it's interesting, too, just being over there. Um, like I said, because we've got plenty of time on this message. Um, it's interesting that they call alcohol spirits. Yes. Isn't that interesting? You ever stop thinking about that? They call them spirits. There are actually some liquor stores that it says that. They, they literally have it on, on their, you know, their billboard. Okay? Now, the Lord has delivered me to the point of me exercising, letting the Holy Spirit help discipline me. And watch this too, deliverance came because I opened the door for deliverance. I wanted it in my life. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Freedom can be yours. Yes. But if you entertain it yes. and you cuddle up with it, you know what I mean? And you placate it, mess around with it, whatever your thing is, be careful lest you fall. That's right. This is how this is how Christians get into trouble all of the time. I just happen to use that one thing. There are many things. Okay. Last week, I really encourage you two to go last week because I, I just I'd spend all the time recovering. I mean, I talked about how affairs start. <laughs> I talked about all that last week. I say I did. The Spirit of God just gave me really a real flow and a divine utterance along those lines. Yes. They just don't happen. They're not happen chance. 
there's things that cause it to happen. Can you say amen? Amen. So at any rate, last week we discussed from Mark's gospel, starting in the first chapter, and then we moved to the end of the book, and uh, we discussed a few things. So what we'll do, I'm not going to read that much of it because I'm going to share some other things tonight, some other scriptures, but we're going to stay in the demonic realm. We're going to stay with what Jesus did about dealing with the devil, and he didn't play with him at all. And, and we're also going to see how that people not only responded, but how the enemy responded to his authority, his anointing. They, they recognized him. They knew who he was. But what's interesting, I'm going to show you in here in a, in a minute, I'm going to show you from Scripture, this is super critical. A number of these people that got delivered, even the demoniac, we'll look at it. Watch this. When he saw Jesus come, he not the devil in him, he cried, he went and fell at his feet and worshipped him. Amen. No devil's going to run and worship him. That was the first action and first voice. Guess what the second voice was? The legion. Any. Then they cried out. But the man wanted deliverance. Yeah. He couldn't get it nowhere else. Do you understand? And when I read it, it'll really make sense. A lot of people have heard that story. They read it, but they read right over that. He wanted freedom. Free will choice is involved. And he knew Jesus was the answer for it. He recognized that authority on him. He had heard of him anyway. He had heard about him go, you know, going about, doing all these things. And bottom line, he ran to Jesus. Yeah. And then we'll, we'll see what happened. Matter of fact, we're going to do this. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that's cool. We're, it, it, let's go to Mark. I'm going to go to Mark 5. Yep, Mark 5, I'm going to read verses 1 through 20. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And we're definitely going to go over to Matthew 2, 9, 32 through 34 in a minute. All right. We'll just start with this. We'll start with one of them here. Okay. Mark's Gospel in the fifth chapter. Here we go. All right, and there came over, uh, or they came over to the other side of the sea and to the country of, of the Gadarenes. Verse 2. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met uh, him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Now I made comment too, you're going to see in all of these different situations, the word unclean is all, always there. Because I don't care what fashion of demonic activity it is, it's always unclean. That's sure. right. Sure. And it's important to understand that. Three, who had his dwelling, okay, among the tombs, and no man could bind him. The other thing about these demons, depending on the level of demonic activity going on in your life, they are strong too. You follow me? This is why they just have a fit come out of people. This is why people can have supernatural strength yes. that, that don't want deliverance. The bottom line is, but, you know, because these demons are powerful yeah. and they get them. Yes, yeah, sir. They have, I said this and I, I need to repeat it. Two people occupy vessels. The Holy Spirit or the Spirit of God or the enemy. They have to occupy, and it has to do with what's called spiritual jurisdiction. See, Satan is not only a legalist, but he also understands too his, um, his sphere, if you will, of, of authority in the earth, what he can do and what he can't do. Okay? God will allow certain things to happen because of spiritual jurisdiction. You follow me? But he gave the believer the authority to deal with it. You understand? So, in order for God to get anything done in the earth, ultimately he's going to do it through a vessel. Yeah. It's going to be done through a vessel. Amen. Same way with the enemy. Understand that. 
And that means a body. And your body is not your spirit and it's not your soul. It's your flesh. Three, again. Mark 5, verse 3. Who had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him. No, not even with chains. Verse 4. Because he had been often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. Verse 5, and always, get this, all the time, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. I'm going to stop there and say something. You've seen these situations where people cut themselves, even mm -hmm. to this day, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. The temple, they do that. They'll, they'll cut themselves. There's a demon in play there, obviously. Yes, yes. You follow me? That's right. Verse 6. But when, now listen carefully here. This is what I was talking about a second ago. But when he, who's he? The man that was, that was doing all this, cutting himself, nobody could bind him. You know, he'd been trying to be bound with chain, all this. The man in the tomb, cry, all this. Crying and cutting himself with stones. What did he do? Look at verse 6. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. Yes. Who had the first response? The man or the devil? The man. man. Thank you. We're going to see that and validate that in verse 7. And cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high? I adjure thee by God thou art, uh, that thou not torment me. Now, if you, if you don't examine that real close, we see the man run, sees Jesus afar off and runs to worship him and right on the heels of it, the way that they wrote it in the King James, we're hearing this uh, cry, this loud voice saying, what have you got to do with me? It sounds like it's still the gathering doing it, but it's not, it's the demon in him. Right. He, he, the man, responded to Jesus first. Once he moved toward his deliverance, though, and the deliverer, then the demons were started responding. Mm -hmm. This will happen in any proper anointed environment, and it's the environment that's coming back. Amen. That's right. It never went away. It never should have. Mm -hmm. It's like I said when I came home and gave my Nepal mission report. One of the first things I said out of my mouth is, because I wanted it caught on video, Book of Acts, I said, and Mark 16, 15 through 20 is very much alive in the world. Amen. Yes, amen, forever. Right it's all we experienced over there. Mm -hmm. And they were not hard to handle either. I like what Rock Farsi said about uh, Lester Summerall. Uh, Rod said, of course, of course, he was his spiritual daddy, taught him a lot of things. Most of what he knows, I, well, along with the Lord, obviously. But I'll cut to the chase. He said, yeah, one of the things he taught me was how to cast out devils or cast out demons. Mm -hmm. He said, and I saw him do it. And he said, and if he was a smart devil, he'd come out quick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, right. And I love that. Amen. People like Lester, Norval, I was privileged to minister alongside with some of these great men of God, not just see them, but also lay hands on people cast out the devil, pray for people. Oh yeah, and I won't forget to share that we were talking about it. I didn't, about what happened on the airplane. Yes. Because when I gave, I will we'll get to something in a minute because it was something I left out of that testimony we're going to catch on, we're going to catch now on video where it can go out worldwide. Okay. And go back later and look at Sky High Miracles or just look at the Nepal Mission Report. But I'm going to share something tonight. The Lord arrested my thinking on it and I told Terry about it the other night. And I said, I completely forgot to talk about it. One, it just at the time didn't matter. But when I got into this, the Lord showed me why this happened, something happened that I didn't talk about after this woman was raised from the dead. And I spoke to the spirit of death. Who's the author of that? Satan. Satan. It's a demon. He come to take her life early, to kill, steal, destroy. He tried to kill his mother on that airplane. And God wasn't having it, neither was I. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But we'll get to what happened in a minute. 
But notice here now the demon's screaming out. Verse 7 again, he said, and he cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus? And there was one, Wait, come around, don't, don't you even mess with us? Thou son of the most high God. See, he knew he was too. Notice they recognize him. The, the point about why we open with Luke 4 18 through 19, it's the same spirit of the Lord that was upon Jesus is upon you and me when we're born into God's kingdom, bless God. Amen. This is transferred to the believer. And the devils know it. But if you don't know it, and you don't know who you are in Christ, and you don't know you have that authority and how to wield your sword and what to do, they'll run roughshod over you. Or they'll just keep going about what they're doing. Don't put up with the devil. And not just in your own personal life, because this is a lot of what this is about, so you can get freedom in your own life. But also, too, with loved ones and people around you, You'll learn to be sensitive to, the, to what we're talking about here because Jesus taught it. Amen. And when you do, don't pussyfoot around with the devil. Now, when you're dealing with a devil, again, I'm following the Holy Ghost. I have to. In this. Oh, I don't have to. I get to. Yes. I get to in this. Just, he, he let me know when I started it. He said, you're going to have to. He knows. Wait, well, he knows this all. You don't think you don't know me? It's like pulling the reins back on a racehorse. Slow down. I got this, he said. It starts with you, with you and I, dealing with areas in our life that we need to rid. But as for dealing with other people, because their free will is involved too, mm -hmm. when I'm dealing with a demonic situation with a person, uh, first thing I ask them, and one, if the devil starts speaking, I tell him to shut up. And you'll see he does too. I did just like Jesus did. Every man of God that was ever powerful that walked in this, from my buddy John Bevere, Norval Hayes comes to mind, Lester Summerall, R.W. Shambach, I got to minister side by side with all of them. I don't say that to bring attention to myself. I, I couldn't even orchestrate it. God did it. He did it. He brought them. And Jimmy come up, when I went down the prayer line up, Jimmy, Pray with him. Come up here yeah. and walk the line. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Did God let me know? First time I ever Please. sat in a normal Hayes meeting, when I sat there, the Spirit of God spoke up on the inside of me. He said, Tonight, I want you to not take your eyes off of this man, not just hear what he's got to say, but I'm going to show you and teach you tonight how I flow through a vessel. And boy, did he. Yes. Anybody ever sat with Norval? Norval get up like I'm doing. He just talked for a while. He'd be easy going, just talking and sharing a few things, this, that, and the other. And all of a sudden, he know, he know that anointing would come for it. And what I started to say is, back to the free will thing, these demons are starting to manifest. And one, he shut them up. And the second, if we had them come up, or maybe they might be sitting out there where they're at. Do you want free? Mm-hmm. And you got to discern too, if it's what, because the devil might speak up too. No, but the person like this one, he saw Jesus and ran to him. You want it free? Yes. Yeah. Free wills involved. Yeah. Do you want free? That's the first thing I ask them. No. Do you believe Jesus is, is willing to do this? Do you want it? Do you want freedom? They say yes. Then I speak to them, and then I, a lot of times I'll ask them too. What is it? What's wrong? What are you dealing? What's what's the situation? I want to know. I want to be armed with knowledge. That demon starts acting nuts. Shut up. You talk to me. Look at me. Tell me what's wrong. And when they tell me, then I address it and they come out in Jesus' name. Because they got to. And I let them know they got to. I draw the bloodline. You come out. And I don't mean later, mister, as Norval would say. <laughs> now. In Jesus' name, of course. Yes. Yes. So we see here. Now, the devil's running scared. Verse 8, for he said unto him, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Notice Jesus right away, he didn't get in a no die, no big conversation. He said, you come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Watch this, verse 9. And he asked him, what is thy name? Jesus even asked him, see, he bypassed the man, what's your name too? 
He want to identify him. What kind of devil are you or how many are you? And he answered. Notice he answered him. He had to answer him. You have to answer you if you learn who you are. And he answered him saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Verse 10. And he besought him, or one translation, begged him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Yes, sir. Thank you. God always validates his word. Yeah. I was talking about spiritual jurisdiction. Why do you think he asked him not to send them out of their con that country or that area? Demons are assigned also to certain places and areas. Do you follow me? Yeah. Certain regions. Now the Spirit of God hovers over the whole earth, the whole world, and all his people. Amen? Yes. We have authority in the earth, period, given back to it. Adam threw it away. But God come to give it back to us. Yeah, praise God. You better know it. Thank God for salvation. Thank God for not having to die and go to hell and all that. But everybody makes that the full doctrine. That is not all that Jesus came for. Amen. He came to restore us and make us free and give us back authority and dominion over the enemy, over the works of the flesh, over the spirit of darkness and put light in us. He said, there's no variableness of turning. You're the light of the world. Bless God, go cast it out. Occupy till I come. Amen. That's the word of the Lord, Harold. That's right. And occupy means to take dominion. Amen. Have dominion. Occupy till I come means dominion. Now, so spiritual jurisdiction there. Verse 11, now there was there nigh or near unto the mountain a great herd of swine feeding. I just touched on this last week. We didn't go to the scripture, but it just flowed out of me by the Spirit, right? Because, and I'm fixing to read it in verse 12, and again, he's confirming his word. It's just like I just ran out ahead of his word, so it happened. What did I say earlier? Two people got to occupy a vessel of some sort. They have to have occupancy. Devils don't like to be in dry places floating around. They're going to find a place to occupy, even if it's an animal, temporarily, so they can get on the desired thing, which is a human being or a person. Why? Because we're made in the image of God. And that's the ultimate for them, that is the ultimate abiding place to be because God made us. Amen. So if they can assert and use their authority in the earth to get their bidding and their will done against God's will, they prefer to do it in a person. I understand that. Okay. Verse 12. No, verse 11. Now there was near there into a mountain a great herd of swine feeding. Verse 12. And all the devils, notice plural, because he said legion, besought him, saying, send us into the swine that we may enter into them. Because they didn't want to be sent out to the dry places and they also wanted to stay within the region. And forthwith, Jesus gave them leave. He's like, cool. And also I mentioned too, I find it interesting that swine is considered unclean. Okay? Notice they wanted to come. Oh, let's go to let's get them pigs. We know we have to leave the man. You got us now. We got to do it. Let us go there. Now look what happened. So right away he gave them leave, and the unclean spirit, see I keep saying that over and over, it's replete, went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place in the sea. There were about 2,000. Wow. Now I want you to think about it. This shows you, don't tell me that a person cannot at least be being hassled by a couple of them. If one person right here recorded in the ministry of Jesus had 2,000 in him, 
because they're spirits. You see what I mean? They can occupy a lot of space. Unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. The herd ran violently down the steep place in the sea, and there were about 2,000, and look here, and were choked in the sea. 14. And they that fed the swine fled, there was the keepers of those, and told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see what it was that was done. And they came to Jesus. Yes, sir. This is the other if not the reason he's got me on this. And what happened? Then they came to Jesus. People want results. We're in a time now more than ever to where people, look, we got all the word that a person could ever want, particularly in this country. Amen. But it's really all over the world. Which Jesus said once it's there, it, you're drawing nigh for the end to come. Let me tell you where we're at now in the end time harvest. We're back to the book of Acts. We're back to the ministry of Jesus Christ, and he wants us to do what he did in the earth. People want free. Yes. They want to see the power. Yes. That's what they want. Yes. They want to see the demonstration of the power of God. They don't want to just hear about God. They want God to move. That's right. And he, and, yes, sir. And he says, I want to move. Yes. But a lot of my people won't let me. Mm. They grieve the Holy Spirit. They we, have, we must learn how to flow with the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Amen. and with the Spirit of God and have eyes to realize and recognize what's going on with well, not ourselves, with people. The other thing, too, back to us first identifying with ourselves and working on ourselves. Before you start running out trying to set the world free from demonic activity, you better make sure you're clean. That's good. Amen. Because they'll look at you like you're a joke. God alone ain't the only one that knows what your little demon problem is. There's three people that really know. God, the devil, and you. Yes. <laughs> you know. 15 again, and then uh, and they came to Jesus. See, it'll draw them to them. See him that was possessed with the devil and had uh, the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. Praise Amen. God. Thank now he's in his right mind. Yes. And they were afraid. Yeah, they were afraid. We're not supposed to be afraid of them. They're supposed to be afraid of us. Yeah. They are. Yeah. Actually, they are. It's just like everything else though, about Satan. He doesn't want you to know it. Mm -hmm. He operates in the dark. He's stealthy. He doesn't like to be exposed. Right. Once he's exposed, he's had it. Yeah. He's a deceiver. He's a master at it. Yeah. The problem was the, the, with deception is deceiving <laughs> 16 and they that saw it told them how it befell to him and was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine in other words they went and told the story verse 17 and they began to pray him to depart out of their coast verse 18 and when he was coming to a ship he that had been possessed with he that had say, been possessed with the devil, prayed him that he might be with him. In other words, he wanted to stay with him. Yes. Verse 19, you think? Amen. I guarantee you one thing, you get somebody delivered fully from a demonic activity. My buddy Matt Gover was one of them. They had to lock him up. I played it right here. We have 1.3 thousand, I think, is climbing. Me sitting there talking a little bit, turning on a recorder and sitting down on a stool. And in the natural, people thought that was the stupidest thing he'd ever do. But I obeyed God. Amen. Then got up and turned it off. And that's one of the most watched. It's called Be Honest with Yourself. Yes. You can look at it. Yes. It's one of the most watched sessions that we've ever had here. Yes. 
that and the one behind it bringing in the harvest yeah. because he was in that one too. Because I did a part two and did the same thing. Talked, played, sat down, turned it off, and closed. Yeah. They had to love, they, the Hell's Angels, did it because he was an enforcer for them. I don't have to tell you what all that means. And that don't mean he just went and beat up people. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Yeah. he showed up, you better know, if you didn't know Jesus, he's going to introduce you to him. But what a work, what a work he did in his life. And I got to not only know him, but like I said too, I got to minister with him. Hallelujah. And Mac didn't put up with him. Hallelujah. I had him come here for three days to Jacksonville. Hallelujah. And for three days, three evenings, he not only got up and gave his testimony and prayed, but then he come off of that, pot, that platform just like they did here. They ran to Jesus. They didn't run to Mac Gober and me. They ran to the anointing in him and me. Yes. They ran to the deliverer. Hallelujah to Jesus. Many of them couldn't even make it up for We need you, Lord. Same thing happened with Norrell that night. He even told them. He could foretell it. He said, some of you will make it up here, some of you won't. And that's the first time I'd ever seen a move of God like that. That's why God told me, watch. Yes. Don't just hear Watch me work. Amen. I do the work. Yes. You just need to be yielding, understanding, Jesus. willing, etc. And know who you are. Amen. The man knew who he was. Amen. Years later, I've seen John Bevere do the same thing. Johnny, though he's always basically taught tremendous things and turned a tremendous author and this and the other. Beta Satan, etc. Enemy access and that on and on and on. One crying in the wilderness. He's had a revelation of, of right living forever, repentance particularly. Matter of fact, he was even labeled the latter day John the Baptist. But though I got to see John minister a lot, even when he was Benny Hill's youth pastor, that's when I met him. Yeah. <laughs> First time I met him was because he took over one of my meetings. The youth pastor came in. I was scheduled to teach a, a youth session one night, and got and I'm back in a little room. He could call it a green room. What this little I went in a private room so I could go in there and pray in the spirit and kind of get my mind ready for the Lord. Real young in, in the ministry. And the youth pastor came in there and he said, Jimmy, I said, Yeah, what's what's going on? And said, man, it's like five minutes maybe before I'm supposed to step out and go out there. He says, Look, he said, Would you mind stepping down? And see, then that was a test. See? The flesh. Mm -hmm. Step down. What do you mean? Well, this is my chance. This is my turn. <laughs> Well, now I'd be like, the Lord of God, no problem. He said, this guy, this guy here is named John Bevere. Right? You know, John Bevere is like, yeah, I didn't care he was Paul Revere. It's my <laughs> name. Can I be honest with you? It'll help you if you listen to me. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. The devil gets in that. These are the details of that. Sure. Okay. I go out there. He start. I sit down. You know, like, like a lot of them do. What's this guy got? What do I, okay, okay. So what's up here? I didn't even know. He, I didn't. And I didn't know he's been in his youth pastor at the time. Let me tell you something. It wasn't three minutes and that man opened his mouth. I was so straightened out, so convicted. I didn't know what to do. Hallelujah. Man, you'd have thought, my God, that all. Let me tell you something. The power of God flooded in that room and come out of that boy's mouth like I had nothing I'd have I was like, oh my God. I'm like, no, oh, forgive me, Jesus. <laughs> but I'm transitioning from that. That was when we were young. John's younger than me. But later, I got to see him and even minister with him some over the years. Saw him a lot. Sat in his ministry a lot. All of a sudden, he showed up at a meeting, and uh, this is all important with me doing it. The Lord won't sit out here. Because what we're discussing here is what happens that people want free what they do when they encounter the power of God. Yes. See, you'll receive power if the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Yes. Isn't that what the book of Acts says? Yes, it does. He said, Terry, here, stay here. Don't do nothing until this happens. And you're going to get a suddenly. 
he showed up one night years later. Now, by now, I've known him for years. He shows up one night, and praise the Lord, I'm telling you, what we did, I saw John Bevere transform to a normal hay situation. So much so that he talked a little bit, shared some things, exercised his authority, and he went over to the side of the stage, because we were up on a platform, and he went over and squatted down. Okay? He just squatted down, took his arms across him around his knees, and he sat there. I'm on the front row naturally because I was always the front row guy. I still am. Because I'm hungry. I like to hear I don't miss nothing. I like down the spout where the glory comes out. Say amen. I watched him, but, it, but he's sitting there, and he's just what all he did was move, he stepped aside and let the Spirit of God take over. He sat down, wrapped his arms around his knees, and he sat there with a smile on his face and just watched as the Spirit of God. People were screaming and crying and just falling down on the power of God and getting delivered, and he didn't do a thing. He didn't come off the stage. He didn't lay a hand. He didn't do nothing. He didn't say another word. He just sat there Amen. and watched it happen. Yes. And I sat there and watched God go. Amen. Glory to God in heaven. Yes, Lord. All right, one last thing. We'll close. Let me finish up this portion of scripture. I'll close with that thought I told you I was going to tell you about, and then we'll we'll pick it up. Not next Wednesday, because by, by the way, too, so I don't forget it too, because we do have people that watch in the local area. Uh, we're having revival this coming week, starting this Sunday, and it's going to go all the way through Wednesday. So I want to give you a personal invite. The leadership, my pastors, of course, and all the leadership at Cornerstone would love to have you come out. Yeah. Well, it starts Sunday. Of course, our normal services on Sunday are 10.30 to 12, but also this thing is going to be like 7 o'clock it starts. Uh, and I'm not going to say 7 day. Let me tell you what happens when, see, revival is God's arrival. Hallelujah. If it's a real one. That's see, right. I said revival is God's arrival. Hallelujah. And when he shows up, shows up like I'm talking about, uh, well, Hallelujah. bless God, I ain't telling how long this thing going at night. Uh, but I know one thing, if the Spirit of God is moving, I'm staying until he's done. Amen. You say amen? What's the address? The address too, by the way, amen. Praise God. It's 7144 Atlantic Boulevard right here in Jacksonville, Florida. And our zip code is 32216. Yes. Of course, you want to map quest it. And get yes. It. You say amen? amen? Let me finish this scripture. I'll close that one thought and we're done. And we made it too. We're still on time. We can burn up an hour. Praise God. So I was at verse 18, and it says, and, and when he had came into the ship, he that had been possessed had been possessed, with the devil prayed him that he might stay with him, no doubt. 19, how, how be it Jesus uh, uh, suffered him not, or allowed him not, but saith unto him, go home. He said, no, don't you, I love you, but you can't hang with me. He said, do this, go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord has done for thee and has had compassion. See, yeah. Jesus was moved with compassion. The yeah. point that we want to make here in closing, Jesus. and I'm going to share this one thing, and we, I promise we're closing. We'll pick all this up next week. He wants people free. Yes. Amen. The ministry of Jesus. Many, many wonderful things happened. He did a lot of miracles. But the primary thing that Jesus did replete throughout his teaching and preaching ministry was deal with the devil. Amen. He dealt with the devil. And he wants us to know how to do it as well. In closing, the airplane incident. Some people have seen it, know about it, some don't. When I, went, when I was going to Nepal, I was on the flight to Qatar, which is about what, 16, 17 hours, it's long. So I'm on the flight to Qatar, and then from Qatar you get off of that, fly another about three hours or so to get into Nepal, to Kathmandu. <clears throat> about halfway into, the, well, when I first boarded the plane, and here's what's cool too, my pastors, well, it's all cool, because Jesus is cool, but my pastors that also prayed too, they prayed to send me out. But one of the things that was specific, and particularly Pastor Ronnie, brought specific specifics to it. Yes. Um, was that I would also be seated on the aircraft, whether it be coming or going, 
where God would have me to be. This was this was prayed. This was an agreement. His hands were laid on me, and I was sent out. Yes. Well, I get into this flight, and about half, say, eight hours into this flight, <clears throat> early when I boarded the plane, for that matter, there was a, a mother and her son, an elderly mom and son there, and actually they were even seated in the wrong place. And I come up to get my seat, or sit, thank God for my pastor, he made it right an outside seat. And they were they saw me so immediately, they're like, oh, we need to move. I oh, no, 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 you don't do it. No, the people in front, they were already settled. They were in the wrong seat. I said, why don't everybody just stay with it? And they, they, everybody was complying. So we're already on the plane, I'm fixing it. Forget about it. We take off. This woman, and I, I'd shared before too, her son was very compassionate with her. It makes me think he was super compassionate. He loved on her. She'd lay on his, his bosom, he'd rub her face and oh. pet her. She had meals on the plane. She was like, I mean, yeah, she showed no sign of, that anything like occurred was going to happen. She wasn't sick eight hours into this flight. But finally, I'm able to fall asleep. And I, so I'm sleeping. And then I wake to this loud noise. And it's not her, it's him. Mom, wake up, wake up, wake up. And he's shaking his mom by, and she just, she's limp as a rat, a dishcloth. She just falling all over the place. He's going so far, he's panicking, he starts slapping her in the face. Then this composure came over me, that because normally, you know, I should have been rattled. But I wasn't because the Spirit of God just was there. Yes. You know, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Amen. And I had this unusual composure about me. I, and I, I watched what was happening. Finally, I got him calmed down. I said, calm down. I said, is she breathing? And then I had to ask him, I said, is she breathing? So he puts his, you know, hand there, ear, the, all that. And he looks up at me, no. Hold on. I go get an attendant. In the back, I said these three words right away. I said, one of three things that's happening. Attention here. Okay. I said, we have a woman that's either having a stroke, she's either possibly dying, or she has died. And boy, they got busy. And I guess they took the one with the most medical training, sent her up there. I'm out of the way. I let her go there. She goes up there. First thing she goes to is what anybody should go to if they got any medical training, her pulse. She leans over. She's got her wrist. He's already confirmed she's not breathing. She puts her thumb on the wrist. I said, does she have a pulse? She don't say nothing back to me at first because I'm looking at the back of her head. This woman. Does she have a pulse? Then the steward, she, her head, she shakes no. She stands up, takes off to the back of her plane or somewhere. It was at that point, and I'm looking at him, and naturally he is just beside himself. Well, wouldn't you be? Yes. She's gone. Yeah. I'm talking about just gone. Yeah. All the way back, mouth wide open, not breathe, nothing. The woman's died on the airplane. Yeah. And just as clear in my inner man, the Spirit of God let me know. He said, if you lay your hand on that woman's head, but notice this. He said, and speak to that spirit of death. Don't just pray, get up and help her. No command that spirit of death to leave her body. Mm -hmm. I'll raise, in my son's name, I'll raise her up. And then worship me. Make oh, me think of Norval. Then worship me. Amen. I can do the anointing now. Hallelujah. I'll put my hand on my baby. And thank God I had enough of this in me. I knew my authority. And I knew God couldn't lie. These signs says shall follow them who believe. Yes. That's right. In his name. I laid my hands on her head and I said, You spirit of death, I command you to leave this woman's body right now in the name of Jesus. She'll live and not die. Then I raised my other hand. I said, And Father, I thank you. I worship you, Jesus. And I thank you for not letting this woman die in her son's arms. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Just that quick, not going along. I took my hand off of her, and her head, like I said, was already laid back. I 
turn this way to look at her. I'll do it with the camera. I'll turn to look at her. And her eyes were closed naturally, but her eye all of a sudden, it wasn't three seconds, five seconds. Her eyes began to roll around in her closed eyelids. Wow. Next thing you know, her eyes popped open like this, and she went, <gasps> air come back in her lungs. Hallelujah. And then when she did, instead of looking to him, she went like this, her arms stretched out, and she looked over at me. Hallelujah. Because she didn't see me standing there. She saw him. Yes. She saw compassion. Yes. And I held her little hand. Yes. And I said, praise the Lord. Amen. I said, thank God. It's not me, but thank God. But here's the part I left out. I about forgot about it. That happened. But here was the next incident, and we read about it. We're dealing with the devil. In this case, he was trying to kill her. Spirit of death. What happened after she come around like that, the next thing happened, she's like, she needed that one an airplane bag. She threw up. She began to throw up. Yes. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Once she came back to life, the bottom line is, and that demon was expelled, she threw up. Yes. And when I was studying for this and re-examining the scripture, the Spirit of God brought that to my attention because we see that replete too yes. in the ministry of Jesus, amen. Mm -hmm. And this is why many people you see in deliverance services, when they're getting set free from demons, they begin to throw up. Yes. They will They'll throw up all over the place, amen. Beloved, to the next time we get together around God's Word, stay tuned to the broadcast. I'm going to be out of town this week. Bless God, Kingsway Fellowship International. Matter of fact, before we know it, I'll be standing up there in the morning. Praise God, talking oh, to them. And uh, we're excited about that and approaching an opportunity to go there. But uh, we'll be back for revival. Me and Terry will be gone. We'll get home probably late Saturday night. So we'll be here Sunday, bless God, and we'll be here for the revival. And I'm so excited, I can't wait to do it. In fact, one of the guest speakers that's coming to our revival will be there as well. So I'm excited to meet him. I get to hear him preach before he yes. comes here, so that's pretty cool. And, uh, but at any rate, God bless you. Remember, till the next time we get together, I always tell you around God's word that God does love you. There's freedom in Jesus. God loves you, we love you. Come to revival, see, see, if, see if it ain't so. And remember that Jesus loves God and the Lord, amen. Praise God.